One, 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 uh, one shot. Now the future is yours. Go. For the kill, the breeze cut, freeze up, straight drop for the kill, the talking. Taking over pieces and shares of all the sky high, check the movement is here. Yeah, yeah. it's one heart, one shot, now the future is yours, go! Dreams into reality In the lab with the formula and chemistry Your memories spark and motivate And make the industry shake You put the bars in the place I'm talking one, one chance at best Yes, painting pictures for the culture Keep the brush fresh Took the trouble, broke the drum of passion Never rest, freedom is a teacher Under pressure, now we bless See I was so close with the glow It's one art, one shot Now the future is yours, go Yeah it's one all one shot, now the future is yours, let's go! Whoa, what is going on tonight? Exciting, exciting. The alpha shot. Welcome, welcome. So we got some people here in the chat. Ariel, Richmond Ariels, thank you, bro. If anybody, oh, uh, Dutch Cam Jam, what's up, man? From Vancouver. Stop by and say, thanks for stopping by and saying hello, bro. Well, let's just get this show started here and add in my man, Kyle Watts. If you don't know Kyle Watts, he is an amazing creator. He is in Minnesota. I'm in Florida, so we're kind of on two ends of the U.S. It's really warm down here, and it's starting to get really cold up there, right? Actually, it was like 90 today. <laughs> we're having weird weather, though. It's never this warm up here. This time Crazy. Here. Yeah, it's... uh. It's definitely um, def definitely a little uh, warm down here. Well, it's actually starting to get nice. It's starting to be standable. Like I, I can actually go outside right now in shorts and a short sleeve and not sweat like crazy. It's starting to cool down over here. I don't know. Hmm. Anyways, it's great to see everyone in the chat. Uh, since this is our you know, first one in a while, uh, why, don't you, why don't you just give yourself a little introduction? My name is Producer Paul, a, uh, a, or Paul Feinberg, aka Producer Paul, for those who know me by that. Uh, but, uh, but what tell us about yourself, Kyle? Man, uh, I'm Kyle Watts. I also have a channel like Paul's uh, Gear Channel, doing gear reviews and kind of tutorials and some random stuff every now and then. Yeah, kind of a buddy. so very similar to mine. So that's why we. We, we connected and uh, he actually was a smaller channel than me and his stuff is way better than me so he's starting to blow up and uh, for good reasons so you definitely don't know who he is gotta check him out um, I don't think I have any links I'm a failure so uh, at the end of the stream I'll add them all in there but pretty much uh, youtube.com slash Kyle Watts TV but uh, yeah um, we're gonna be doing I love I love talking cameras I love like Sony stuff we're both Sony shooters and one of the streams I used to watch regularly was the Jason Vong stream with that one camera guy, and they've like completely fallen off the face of the earth. And and I don't know. So I wanted to get my fill and and, and talk about camera gear because I'm a nerd. So let's hit this thing right off. Um, what do you think about the Sony A7 IV, man? Uh, A7 IV. I think it should have came out like a year ago, but I mean, I, <laughs> I understand that's. This is like the long topic of when it's going to come out. It's been what four years now since a seven three came out. Um, yes, it's been a while. Got several ideas of why this thing is not out yet. Um, one, including the fact that maybe they made it so different that it's just buggy and maybe they're 
trying to fix all that out first. I don't know. Sometimes when you put new stuff in cameras, it just takes longer for you to like kind of product test it and make sure it's going to work correctly and go backwards. And it sounds like it's going to have a lot of new stuff in it. So I mean, it does. Uh, a lot of people think it's going to have 10 bit in it. And I don't know. I'm on the fence with that one. I just feel like if they put 10 bit in it, it would it could it would totally almost make it so that people won't stop buying the A7S3 and that thing has been selling like hotcakes right now but I think if they do add 10 bit it'll be like 422 or sorry 420 uh nothing too fancy no special all i codex just 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 mm -hmm. give a give people a a taste of 10 bit but I don't know what do you think about that I mean it's it's something that so I have two way, two ways to think about this. Uh, a, it's it's Sony's like the A seven S three is Sony's kind of flagship sales camera. It's the camera they I've seen, I think they've sold the most of. So I don't think they want to like they don't want to make people upset about the camera if it's not what everyone wants it to be. But they also have to be realistic and make it uh, priced in the point that it's going to be priced at somewhere in that two thousand to twenty four hundred dollar range. Uh, if it goes higher than that, I think they might lose out on some sales unless it's really good. But it's not going to be better than an A7S III, at least for video, because that's it's it's a thousand dollars. It's going to be a thousand dollars cheaper. It can't be better. So there's going to be a lot of features that are on the A7S III that won't be on the A7 IV, for sure. But then also, 10-bit. I think there's a lot of there's a lot to be said about the ecosystem. And if you have the A7S III and you're using this as a B cam. Right. Should it have 10 bit for the right colors? Yes. So I, I 420 10 bit, maybe like more than likely, I'd say it's about 50% right now. Likely. I can't say, cause I don't think anyone, obviously none of us have the camera. So this is right. all kind of hearsay or just assuming, but in the world of not upsetting creators over a camera that people have been waiting for, for two, three years now, it, I hope it has 10 bit but it's not going to be 422 and you're not going to get uh crazy codex and stuff like that. I think it's going to be pretty dialed yeah, in. I mean, the funny part is like we said, the, the a7 III kind of like started this whole Sony, like super push towards Sony. I mean, it was affordable, full frame camera shot, amazing video. I mean, a lot of people who were shooting on the a7 S2 at the time said, Forget this. We're, we're going to jump to the A7 III. It just makes more sense. The low, it got had really great low light capabilities. The autofocus was amazing. Um, I mean, the, they they did improve the colors from the two from the two to the three uh, pretty significantly. They added that brand new uh, Z battery that lasts way longer. I mean, I I don't think I ever have to change batteries these days. Nope. Uh, I I bring like three with me, but I I don't ever usually end up swapping them out. <laughs> well, yeah, the, the so the ten bit like some like Long Rider said too. He's got a good point, and it's something that I was going to say. Uh, the camera that this is going to be competing against is like the the EOS R R six, uh, which is ten bit. Um, I I think this what is it the Nikon Z Z something Z twenty three or a Z two uh, Z six two. Z, sorry, Z twenty three is a diagnosis code for part b insurance uh sorry um, i mean I, I i thought only nikons were potatoes so i, I didn't yeah really, i mean didn't really know it, it, it's got to compete with what's going to be out there so if they want to do a big step up they're going to do a 10 bit it, it just it's not going to be 422 i can't see them it, it's going to be below the level of an R, uh, a7s3 but then you have to remember too it's got to be below the level of an a7r4 as well so because it's not this isn't going to be a video camera specifically well, it's obviously 33 megapixels so yeah. Nice medium. And, and honestly, think, have you ever shot with a four? I have not shot with a four. Nope. It is an amazing camera as far as the the just the image quality you can shoot on that thing. You can cr you can take a picture and crop in on it a ton. Yeah. The well, I mean, other thing I hate about that, but the thing I hate about that camera the most is because of that same reason, the file sizes for those pictures are ginormous. Yeah. And if you take any sort of burst you're just <laughs> chewing through that memory card right i mean so, for, i i feel like i'd probably be uh biased on that because i shoot everything 10 bit 422 in video and i put you know five gigs in a 20 second clip it seems like so that's well, probably yeah. not a big deal if you're a photographer for sure but it's going to be a hybrid camera it has to be it's that's what the a74 is going to be it has to be almost as good as those other two cameras in both video and photo 
but it's going to sacrifice a lot on this camera to get into that price point. I think you're going to get a, a less good, like not as good of a viewfinder, not as good of a screen. They're going to cheapen out on some parts. Personally, I think, personally, I think they're probably going to put it in the A7 III body, the A7S III body. Oh yeah, um, I, that's the rumors. That's what they're going to be doing. Because which is, I love the body, but it's, it's yeah. it is a lot bigger than the A7 III. Like maybe the grip will be slightly different because they they always make the grips. But I think you're going to see the record button. I think you're going to see almost an identical body to the A7S III. Um, you might have some different functions. I hope the I hope Sony will fix the stupid turn the the menu setting. <laughs> like they make this little click down turn app uh, exposure thing where you can lock it. Why they don't do that with this is beyond me. I, I don't me. know that. I hate I hope that, they fix too. That. I, I wish they would fix that. Um, but I think you're going to see a lot of the same stuff. You probably will see the same custom buttons. I wouldn't doubt if it's the exact same body because we're already hearing rumors of flip screen. It's going to have the full-size HDMI. Um, I mean, it just makes sense the because I mean, they don't have to do as much work, right? Yeah, and, and it's they already have it. And that's the thing is it's either going to be put in like the R4 body or the A7 is three body and being and a video camera. I think they're going to put it in this because of the buttons. Well, because they got to keep the, they also figure out the overheating, which is amazing on Sony's part. I thought it was hilarious. Canon comes out with everybody was like, Oh my gosh, the, the, the R5 and the R6 are going to be amazing. And they end up being those like overheating bricks when they right. first came out. Now Canon to my knowledge has fixed a lot of that, but Sony just has been, doing small bodies for a really long time they i think they finally finally figured it out whatever voodoo magic they're doing with i've n i never get the overheating si sign on on these these cameras I've got, you know i like i've i've been shooting a lot outdoors lately uh and in minnesota lately it's actually been quite hot we've been getting like some 90 degree weather which is strange but i've definitely felt it get warm where you kind of go like, ooh, hey, this I, I can feel the heat on this, but it's <laughs> I never got warnings. It hasn't. It down. definitely does get hot, especially yeah, if you're shooting, shooting in 4K 120. Like that last video I did, I was doing everything in S and Q. So like, if it's going to overheat, it's going to be on S and Q because that's running to crazy data rates. And uh, Preston, what's up, man? Uh, thanks for just stopping by. Uh, and and Nathan, man, uh, it was great to see you in in Jake Sloan stream. Uh, thanks for stopping by. We have been talking just about the A Zone Four. And um, I definitely am going to get to the one of the things you were talking about in Jake's stream um, about the ASONC once we get through some of these things. I think the uh, the biggest thing, you know, obviously they're saying now it's going to have 15 stops of dynamic range with the ASON4, um, which is which is pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's going to be that's going to be pretty huge. Uh, 5.5. I mean, on, IBIS is never anything could cry home about for Sony cameras, but. They've been getting better with that active, uh, full size HDMI, like you just got in saying, and of course they're gonna have the the, the SD the CF Express cards, which begs to you know, think maybe there's gonna be some sort of. I mean, if you put both those cards in there, I mean, right? I don't know. Are they, is it gonna be used? It's got it's gotta have something to use them. So or they're had, just trying to recycle. I had some kind of I had some guesses on that first off because I, I that's why I said if they're gonna use this body, that means they're gonna use the SD UHS two and the CF Express cards. So I, I do think they're going to have some 4K capabilities. Um, as far as how far that goes, that's beyond me. But the burst modes on these things also, in like photo bursts, I'm guessing they're going to have like maybe up to 20, 25 bursts per second. And that might be where they need the higher memory cards or like the CF Express. Um, I don't see them going past 30 or even going to 30 because once again, the A7SR or the A7R4 has the 30 burst frames so i don't think they're going to like cannibalize their cameras by making a mid-range camera do better than their high-end cameras so or like you know, and they're gonna surprise i think they're definitely gonna come through and surprise us um what's up steve man steve's like lives down uh in a street or not a street uh, a city next to mine nice. um yeah yeah i mean i they're definitely gonna surprise us now the big question for a lot of people too is now with this release, should the people are looking to jump to get a full frame camera or um, or whatnot? Now, Nathan, are you? Uh, I know you were asked about the A7C in the last stream. Uh, hit in, in the comments. Tell me, are you uh, new to using uh, like a full full frame cameras, or what 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 are you shooting on now, or are you, are you just trying to jump into the system? That that would help a lot a lot in answering your questions. But I'm going to go over that a little bit now. Like the A7C. I think is still one of the best YouTuber cameras. I know that a lot of people have been shooting on the A7S3 
And it was a dilemma for me to get the Ace One S3 because I had the Ace One C. It really did check all my boxes. I think I just got the Ace One S3 because I got it for the right price. I couldn't turn it down. I knew it would have the camera for the next five years, so I wasn't necessarily too worried about it. And I like to have two bodies, one for my wife and one for me when we both go out and shoot photography. But um, the Ace One C is such a great on-the-go camera. Eventually, I'll make that video that we shot with all that stuff at Disney uh, and, and go over a little bit about that as we we're doing the, the ZV-1 versus the A7C at Disney. But um, it, it's, I, I love that I can just throw it in a, in a small little bag, put like a 30, 35 millimeter 1.8 or, or this 24 millimeter 1.4, which hopefully I get to keep um, um, in a bit on it and just shoot all day with it. I, I mean, it, I love the compact feel of the camera. You really, it's hard to beat it. People make fun of the EVF, it's a little smaller. I actually like that for on the go traveling. Uh, you don't get this big hunky dory, you know, EVF. It doesn't bother me too much. You can actually angle it, take landscape shots up and down, or, or, or you know, portrait shots up and down. And it doesn't, I don't have to take my hat off. Like a, with, if I had the A7 III, I had to like angle it up because it's, it's a little big, but you could just, you know, leave your hat on, shoot with it. Um, I love the size um, and the form factor. I'm brand so he okay he said I'm brand new I'm looking for a good camera that has good video and photo capabilities for when I go on hikes and travel and then maybe be able to use it a little more in professional settings so I would if I was you I would probably wait to see just to see what the a7 IV has to offer what the price range is but if I had a guess I mean you just based on what you said you want to use it for hikes and travel the a7c is just so good for like traveling, putting it in a bag. I mean, it's not that much smaller because you chop the EVF off essentially, but it, I don't know, it just feels, I mean, what you, you held it a little bit with me when we yeah, were in, I mean, at Disney. I, I personally like the grips better on like the, the A6400 and A, A6600 because they're more contoured. Um, that's my, my kind of my one gripe with that camera was that the grip just was not super awesome, but. You can buy little grip kits for them and anything, anyways. But uh, I liked it. It was it was a good camera. I mean, I've been shooting on APS-C cameras for a long time, so it's it's something that's not like didn't feel abnormal to me to shoot on that. Right. Um, I liked the fact that you could put being a twenty four mil uh, twenty four megapixel sensor, you could put crop sensor lenses on there, and essentially it just becomes an A sixty six hundred. So like when you look at the price range between that A sixty six hundred and A seven C, it was it two hundred bucks. Something like right. that, and it gives you the full frame capabilities with better autofocus and a flip screen. I think that's a great. That is a really good starting camera. That's really going to last you a while and be nice. Um, the shutter roll, on the other hand, is a little not great. So I'm hoping the A7 IV fixes that. But uh, you know, if you're shooting in 1080, also like that's never a problem. But it's 4K only. It's not anywhere near as bad as like these crop sensor cameras. No, yeah. Um, those ones There's are, a little bit of rolling shutter yeah. for sure on the on the on the A7 III and the A7C, but I I mean I will tell you that that you could shoot that professionally, especially a lot of professional work. You just throw that bad boy on. It. Most things are oh, yeah. thrown on a tripod. They just want some nice talking head videos for their social media or something, and then you just shoot a little bit of B-roll, um, put it on a nice little Weeble S gimbal or something like that. But um, I you could get away with and I, I, since it's just starting out. I think it's always great to jump in to a system with the least amount of money invested mm -hmm. at first because I think, I mean, who knows if you're going to be able to stick with it or if you're going to, I mean, you, you might, you might stick with it and love the camera and not need anything else out of it. Yeah. I think the only time people should really upgrade their cameras if, is when they're limited or they're just, you know, gear junkies like us, where we're just like... The other thing, eh. too, with Sony cameras, and this is going to go with probably most new cameras, too, in general, but, like, Sony cameras tend to hold resale better than most cameras do, too. So, like, I'd say they're, they're kind of like... To me, they're kind of like Audis. Like, you <laughs> could drive a car for two years and sell it for almost what you paid for it. And, like, right. Sony cameras tend to be like that, where... Like if you go out right now on Facebook and look up an A6400, you're going to see six to nine hundred dollar price ranges, which this camera is new almost. So like, it just depends on. So you know, it's like get something that you think looks good that you think is going to work for you, and then if it's not what you want, upgrade and sell it. Like it's that's the nice thing about a lot of these things. 
um, especially if they're newer. And I think that A7C is going to be a camera that, unfortunately, for trying to buy used, is going to be a price like it's not going to go down much. No, and uh, so so a few Nathan, years I would be. It's so close to Black Friday. There's so many great sales on Black Friday. I picked up uh, an A seven R fours for like twenty four hundred dollars back when they. I mean, they always pump those. Even even their all their even their new cameras go on down on sale on Black Friday. Um, so you might they might pump this A seven, especially if the A seven four comes out, and they might crank this A seven C down to you know twelve hundred bucks or a thousand bucks. Well, I mean, the A seven has been brought down to like fourteen hundred now a couple times. So right. I mean, it's, so, it's not unthinkable that that would go down as well, especially because, like, you do have to think, too, there's, that Sony's probably got an A7C, like, 2 coming out soon. I, like, it's not anything rumored at this point, but if they continue the compact thing, which I think they will, oh yeah, um, it's it's going to be a matter of a year or two tops anyway. So. I, yeah, I would guess by, like, you know, next year, maybe a year and a half, they'll have the A7C2, and they're just going to take the yeah. a7 4 and throw it into a smaller personally, I think, body i think kind of the move that sony's making and this kind of goes to richmond aerials too he asked about if there's any new aps-c lines coming out uh the, the new aps-c line that did come out is the uh zve 10 right and i think that's going to be kind of where they start going with some of these apc cameras is that kind of point and shoot hybrid with lenses yep and i think they're going to take their normal aps-c line and turn it more full frame like the a7sc that's kind of where I feel like they're going with it. Uh, and Absolutely. You know, uh, Richmond Aerials, if you're looking, that ZV-E10 is, it's a, it's a weird camera. It's kind of a middle-of-the-road thing. I'm he's, not... he's gonna have a, uh, if you want to know more about that camera, you got to subscribe to Kyle. He's He rented it and has like, got a number of videos. Are you like six like, videos of it still. Um, it's, it's a weird camera. Like I think it's a good starter camera, but then also I think it's, got some weird stuff going on with it and like it's nice with the active stabilization but when you put it in active stabilization it crops 40 percent which makes it not a vlog camera and that's what the camera's supposed to be so i don't preston has a question that i want yeah. to get on and it's probably going to tag steve's preston no i i really don't he says uh do you do you think sony will ever update their companion app their sony edge like imaging edge the imaging app yeah because I think the I mean they were always updating and it's just I don't think they're gonna make it that much different. So if, if any I used to sh so <laughs> here we go Steve you're here's your only moment you're gonna shine this because this this is it. Uh, when I first started I was with uh, Panasonic and their autofocus was non-existent so I literally used their app to touch focus when I was sitting down doing talking head stuff and their app is absolutely amazing and then you go to Sony's app and it's like me I mean it's not terrible it's gotten a it's lot better good. at yeah. least as far as the stability goes in the last few years but it's nothing I, it would be cool if you could like tap focus and it just ran really smooth um and it was you know easy to hook up some people have a lot of people have a lot of trouble getting it hooked up with the panasonic it's just like boom boom open the app boom it's, it's so quick and easy i think they could work on that a little bit better the app itself the interface is nothing to cry home about but I mean, I would like to see them updated, but that, that's that's about as much Panasonic as you're. That's the only win for Panasonic is their app. Everything else, yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know. I just I just could not take not their autofocus. Gosh, it was so terrible. Yeah, there's a there is something that I will say that's cool. Um, this is a video that Chris brought up to me, uh, Rockhurst, but there's an app called like Monitor. Oh, that which is, app. Like I paid for it. I think there's some portions of it that are free, but um, it's like I got my ass log on. Uh, it's like what eighteen bucks is what I paid for it. This thing is about as good as my external monitor. Yeah, Preston, and the cool thing is that you can like that tap to touch you, what, on this. What's the name of that app? It's just called Monitor Plus. Monitor Plus. Yeah. After uh, the show here, you... we'll put it. We'll put the link in there. But uh, it's just like an iOS or Android app. Um, you can put in like all your S log conversions on here. You can put like different framing on here. You can do the the thing where it shows like all the different framing so you can see what style, you know, if you're shooting 23 by uh, whatever it is. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can do on you. You can control all your settings from your camera. You can tap to focus. I mean, this thing has like no latency to it. 
like when Chris, right. you see videos like this every now and then, you're just like, okay, someone made a cool video on that. Then I tried the product and was just like, yeah, this is my like my go to monitor now for filming myself. So I almost don't That's care crazy. about Sony Imaging Edge anymore. Like it's a non existent factor when you can. <laughs> When you can literally, like, this looks like the back of your screen. I'm probably not going to get focused. But it'll, like, bring up everything that you can control on your screen. Focus and your, you know, ISO and aperture. And you can put LUTs on here and everything like that. It's, oh, it's yeah, a pretty it's cool great. App, so, yeah, so. you yeah, definitely got to check that video out. Like Chris Brockers, yeah, he had yep. a great video on it, yeah. I do um, a video, but there's no reason to when he did it, so. <laughs> yeah, what was the point? He, he, yeah, he did a pretty good job with that dang, dang thing. Um if you guys have any questions too in the chat, just uh, feel free to hit us up. Uh, we'll like to answer, we'll answer anything, any speculations you guys want to add. You know, you want to say how stupid I look. That's fine. You can you can you can say all that <laughs> hey, in the white, chat. Your white balance looks pretty good, Paul. You know, I think we dealt with that this before the stream started, but yeah, I, I think I'm getting I'm figuring out the white balance. You know, I haven't yet. You know, I always carry this little gray card next to me. A long time ago, I got like this, like great these, like this great Gary Vaughn gray card and white card. Okay. I never use them. I probably should use them more often because they have that like auto that like auto. You know, you just take a picture of it and it automatically white balances your camera. Um, I did a video about it like a really long time ago. I I, I need to use them more. So anyway, so like what I wanted to touch on too, and then obviously some of these are rumors and some of these are kind of like uh, assuming. I wrote a list of everything that I think this, uh, sorry, back to the a7 IV, what I think it's going to have. And by the way, like, I, I think at this point, if you don't know, it's, I mean, it, it's supposed to be out by now, apparently, according to all the rumors. Now it's going to be October and we still haven't heard about it. So, I, I, like, it's one of those things where I think everyone always says, like, it's going to be announced any day. I've been waiting for, like, I, I wanted that before I bought this, and then I finally said, screw it, and I bought this. So, like... <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, that's the funny part. I think it was the same. Sony did the same exact thing with the ASO and S3. Everybody was waiting for it, and they eventually just got tired of it. And Yeah, and, like, for me, it's just, like, if you have to keep waiting for a tool that you want to use, that's, you know, like, for me, like, cameras is what, you know, I run my channel with, and I make a small income off of YouTube, but, like, having something now and versus waiting a year from now like i you know i just i wanted this now so i bought it and and you lose you lose all that creative time you lose all yeah. that time that you can be investing in yourself so i guess you gotta weigh out how much do you think waiting for the next greatest thing to come out or mm -hmm. just use what's available to us now you know you know and i was always back then too i was always guessing like is it gonna is it gonna have this is it gonna have this is it gonna have that is it gonna be like the a7 and then eventually i was like i want it to be the a7 III so bad why don't i just buy the a7 III s3 sorry so that's right. what I did, um, you know, and I was like, originally Paul would, I, I talked to him about this. I was just going to buy the A7C and wait until the four came out. And then, I don't know. I just like, I kept wanting the things that were in this camera. So eventually I just saved more and bought it. But at this point, I feel like apparently it's supposed to be out. There's been some reports of some people saying it's on their desk and they're looking yeah. at it. So you can't well, take too much credit in that because it might just be someone whatever but i think that's true um based on a few is. videos that i've seen of some big youtubers like oh you can't see go in this room here there might yeah, be something well, in there from you know the other reason i think that might be true too is that if you look on twitter and you look on instagram there's been a lot of camera sales going on by some bigger youtubers i saw yes. like donna just off let a bunch of stuff including one of his a7s3s um one like of his Cr fx3s Chris yeah just got he's getting rid of an fx3 not saying, but I mean, if there's going to be someone getting a demo camera in their hands, it's going to be someone who runs Sony ch cameras already. So if it's out there, I mean, like the NDAs are pretty strong on new camera releases, so they, they clearly don't want to say they have it. But um, a lot of times when you see big YouTube channels that are Sony creators or whatever creators, if they start shooting a bunch of extra content, if they start shooting crazy photo shoots, on their Instagrams. Sometimes there might be a reason for that. It might be because they're actually testing the camera out. Um, I don't know. I'm not saying, but kind of saying that it might be out already in some people's hands. We just won't know about it until it's announced. Right. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's something that I'm guessing though, that it like what we, what we has to have, it's got to have the new Sony, Sony menu. That's no question. 
Um, I'm a little shocked that the last couple of cameras that came out, like this A7C I, and like the ZV-E10, the, the ZV-E10 did kind of have a new menu, but it wasn't Sony's new menu. Right. Um, it's going to be a touchscreen menu. It has to be. Uh, and that's just because it's competing against other cameras that have that. So it has right. to have that. Um, I think it's going to have the 30, they're saying 33 megapixel sensor, which will be better for photography. It won't be as good for low light. Um, but depending on what um, processor they put in there too, and the, if they're running S-Log3 and they actually have 15 steps of dynamic range like the A7S3, maybe that won't matter. I mean, it will it be it won't be as good. I don't think it'll be nearly as good as low light as the A7S3. No. But if it gets anywhere close, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And the A1 has very good low light performance, yep. and it's a 50 megapixel sensor. Yep, and that's, so, I think, a lot to do with, um, I mean, obviously in photography, that's not color profiles, but in picture profiles, if you're shooting in like an S-Log3, that's where you're going to get the most dynamic range. If they're claiming 15 steps of dynamic range, I'd say it's probably going to be about 13, realistically, because that's right. always what it is. But, because um, I don't know where they get those numbers from, but when they actually test them, I think uh, Gerald got 14 out of the A7S3. That's supposed to be 15 and a half. <laughs> but if they have that like kind of second stage ISO, I think you're going to get some clean low light shots. It might not be as good as the A7S III, but then that's where like 1.4 lenses come in play or like 1.8 lenses. So, um, I mean, my A6400 with this Sigma 16 lens on there looks <laughs> damn good at 6400 ISO compared to something like this, which is I'm at 12,800 and they're actually pretty similar at times. So a lot of it's just the lens you're using. So. Nathan the sensor, I think, will take better photography, though, and it'll give you better resolution. You can punch in on stuff better. Um, like I said before, it's it might be 10-bit 420, maybe not. Uh, I 100% it will not have 124K. It can't because that, that's what this camera has. That's what you're paying partially another $1,000 for. It might have – I'm, I'm guessing it might have 240 frames per second in 1080, and that may be why you need the CF Express card for like S and Q mode. Cause that's right. probably going to be an S and Q mode thing. I'm guessing 4k 24 and 30 for sure. Maybe 60, um, maybe 60 because that's kind of like, it should have 60 4k. And that would make sense why it needs to have, um, a better, like a CF express card or the, uh, UHS, UHS two cards. Um, the sensor, because it's a bigger sensor means it's going to be like a seven K downsampled sensor. Right. Um, which will be better. Yeah, because like the but... a, the A1 is a 8K downsampled sensor. Right. Which has its drawbacks. I mean, personally, I think like the A6400 I'm shooting on now is a 6K downsampled, and that I think gives you some really strong detail, which sometimes isn't great. But uh, normally on this camera, I don't have it set the way I normally shoot in. I actually turn down the detail a tiny bit on my cameras <laughs> because they're, I, think, I feel like they're just a little too sharp with that 6K down res. Um, there's a, a rumor about this camera being GPS, like a GPS enabled camera. So it'll, you know, uh, shoot, tell you where you shot stuff and stuff, things like that. That might be kind of cool. Um, especially for photography. Um, it's going to have active stabilization, probably like this camera. And I think it's going to do 15 to 20 frame bursts in photo. Uh, I think the a seven three was a 10 burst camera. 10. And then the R the R four and the A one is like thirty, or no, it's what I don't know what the R four is, but A one is like thirty. I'm pretty sure. Um, so I, I can't see that getting as close to that, but I think I could see in the middle somewhere, fifteen to twenty. Um, there might be some cool little photography things they add in there as well. Some, uh, some I don't know. I, I don't. I, I shoot mostly video, so I'm not hundred percent sure on a lot of the cool stuff. But their autofocus system is going to be as good of, as at least the a7 IV or the a7s3 maybe better because they always seem to make better autofocus every camera that comes out i'm guessing maybe 700 800 points of contact focus points um some yeah brad brad has a point a7 IV might get announced on ces instead yeah I right mean, before ces when is ces we'll see I, I um, mean, nathan wanted to know what cameras we both were shooting uh as our dailies 
And okay. I think we, we went over this a little bit, but we're both on ASO and S3s. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he has an A6400 as his like secondary one. And I have my A7C. So yeah, I mean, honestly, my A6400 tends to be more of a live stream camera at this point for me. Um, because if I'm using a B cam, I'm usually using the, the ZV-1. <laughs> Just because this, uh, th- I mean, you can put this in your pocket. So, And if this thing's on a tripod, it's going to look very similar to a lot of these cameras. Um, as long as it's not zoomed out a long ways. But It's a very good, it's a very good um, I do use my A6400, I guess, if I'm doing tripod shots it's not a great camera to walk around with because there's no stabilization and that uh whoops and the uh the uh, shutter roll is pretty intense on the a6000 series um it's also really intense on the zv e10 right um, that's one of the things i'm going to talk about in one of those videos coming up soon but um they have to have all those things on the a7 IV and it has to fix the shutter roll yes those are the, like those are the musts for me if they don't have all that, I think it could be kind of a, I don't know, like part of me thinks that everyone's hyped this thing up so much for the last two, three years that there's going to be a lot of people let down when it's, when it's missing a lot of features and priced at $2,000. It's going to be better than the a7 III. We know that for sure. It's not going to be as good as the a7 R4 or the a7 S3. So anywhere above that's going to be nice. I would still use it and it's going to be priced well, I think. So. Yeah. No matter what it has, it's going to be a good camera. That's going to be for sure. Is it going to be better than the R6? Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. A lot of times the uh, those video like uh, there's a new video out that's like McKinnon and a bunch of other guys in it where they had to tell which camera was the uh the Canon or the Sony. And oh, they were all yeah, color I, I haven't correctly. seen that one yet, but I saw the the Yeah, teaser and for like it. the winner got $10,000 and it like I think most most people got like half wrong. I think McKinnon was just guessing on most of them, and he got like seven out of ten or something like that. But <laughs> I was guessing along with it too, and you're just like kind of scratching your head, like I don't know. I mean, they when you straight out of camera, you see those Canon colors; they're always just kind of distinct compared to Sony. But when they're color corrected, it's just like. <sighs> so this was they both look good color corrected. It wasn't like straight out of the camera. Straight out, it was not straight out of the camera. They color corrected it and then like matched the framing so that it wasn't like a dead giveaway with a lens or something. Right. But I mean, it, they were so close together. There was only two obvious ones. There was a nighttime shot where one was grainy as can be and one was clear as can be. And obviously that's the A7S III. <laughs> but like for the most part, you know, they, a lot of these things are just tools and it's how you use them. That's going to make differentiate if it's good or not. So I think like this whole Canon Sony debate is always it's just whatever you feel comfortable with. But anyway, say what's up, man. Aloha. I'm a big Sony fan, so like I I, I looked at a Canon one time recently, and I'm just like I don't even know how to change anything on this camera. <laughs> Everyone talks about how easy the Canon menu is, and I'm sitting here just scratching my head, like I have no idea what I'm doing with this thing. Any camera menu is easy as long Once as you, you know. use it. Yeah. yeah. And like the Sony menus are easy for me. They're and like the new ones even better. But I don't know. It's it's always just what you know and what you get used to. So Kyle, the video that you're talking about was that. Do you remember which who, who with the creator that posted it's that a, one? F- um, what's that filmmaker channel? That's like uh oh oh the basic filmmaker. Basic filmmaker, I think is what it is. Yeah, they always do the, like the tutorials you see ads for all the time for yeah like lessons and stuff. Um, it's a really good video. Go watch that, you guys, so you can kind of see. Like visually, the ca- these cameras are going to be so similar together that it's just going to be come down to how you use it. Um, and obviously, it's all the every new camera that's made now is great. That that's beyond past that. And it's that's just, really, I mean, when you're buying, oh man, should I wait for the new one or should I wait? I mean, they're all really good at this point. It's all a matter of like just these extra little nuances that you yeah, get as they what you're continue use to. It for. And, and, and if you're just starting out, just get something now and, and, mm-hmm. and start practicing your craft. Then you can worry about upgrading later. Um, Nathan, I shoot mainly on the A7S III when I'm doing video out. I would say that's like like my daily driver. However, there are times when portability is more prominent with me, and I'll take the A7C, and it's really not a terrible camera at all. So unless I'm shooting in the dark or something, I... It, 
it's not a huge deal breaker for me unless I want that 10 bit. Um, but I will shoot for sure the ASO and C when I'm shooting. I know I'm only going to be shooting photography just because it's a 24 megapixel sensor. Not that the ASO and S3 photos are bad with that 12 megapixel sensor. I I think they're really good, especially if you're shooting at nighttime or something. But um, I, I so I, that's not the case. But I it's smaller. It's a smaller body. And if I'm just shooting photography with the family, I much prefer the ASO and C over the ASO and S uh, just for those situations. But my ASO and S3 is my my daily driver. Mm -hmm. And you know, the I, I pretty much just use this one for streaming and stuff like that. The one post I keep seeing all the time too that people will post a bunch of pictures. And they'll say like how much they actually fell in love with the A7S C for photography, which is everyone said what was kind of a surprise. They were not expecting that. Um, and I think, you know, and, and I don't know why they didn't do this with the A1, but there's something to be said about having a flip screen for photography. I never I never use my my viewfinder anymore. Like I rarely use it. I, I think <laughs> yeah, I, it I, has like really great viewfinder on the A7S. Yeah, it, yeah, we don't need it. You know, and I tend to like to use like focus peaking and stuff where I'll put my focus peaking in red. So then you can just focus and see what's, you can literally see what's in focus. Um, plus it zooms in on all these new cameras. You can zoom in quite a bit and control it with a joystick, which is nice. But having those shots like this, where you can like look down at your, at your viewfinder as you're shooting, instead of doing this, like this crap is it, so much nicer. And then also like when there's those times where you're going vertical and you're trying to see but you, the only way you used to be able to do it was to flip the screen up. So you have right. to try to like get the right angle. And then it was great to have a viewfinder because that was a better option. But I love the fact that you can get like on the ground and just put this thing like right there, see the screen just fine, tip up your camera and shoot. That's what I think this viewfinder is going to be great. And that's why I think a lot of people like the a7C. It's because of that, that flip screen that's on there. Yeah. Um, it's more than the I, A7. The flip screen was a, cha a game changer. Yeah. Uh, when, when I when I got the A7S3 and I was like, all right, should I sell my A7S3? Should I keep it? Um, I ended up selling my A7S3 and my 6600 and got the A7C for my wife because she just likes the smaller form factor. And wow, I, I felt, I mean, it, it just having that flip screen, I think I had the A7C before I had the A7S3 uh, and the flip screen, I was like, oh my gosh, this is, so I got rid of my A7S3, got the A7S3 and then I had, you know, two cameras. The, the flip screen just, it's, mm -hmm. it is, like you said, the angles, we when we were at Disney Springs getting all those shots with the A7S3, just being able to like get it low to the ground, flip that screen yeah. out a little bit and just take them. We, we got some pretty fire yeah. shots. Well, on Instagram. That and the only other way you used to be able to do that, you'd have to lay on your side, on your shoulder, Right. With your camera like this, trying, you know, and like it's, it's not a big deal, I guess. If you, but you know, I don't want to land, get super dirty, especially if you're not like in clothes that you can do that with. But it's just having that flip screen to do that one shot is awesome. That was and, a game changer for me. And the other I mean, wonderful thing about the Ace, the Sony system is the lenses. Like. Yep. Lenses are huge. Like you get, you buy a lens and you keep it for the entirety of you owning that entire system, unless they switch the mount, which hasn't happened in a really, really long time for the Sony. So no, and I don't see that them switching today. that anytime soon either. No, um, I mean they have especially when they put out things like the A1, like six thousand dollar cameras. That 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 like set that that E mount is going to be there for a long time. Canon, on the other hand, did that whole change up with their their lens mounts. Oh. And, it pissed yeah. off a lot of people. And and it just is so expensive. To, and their yeah. lenses are way more expensive now. Yeah. And they're big and bulky because they they I mean, yeah, you can get you know, people were saying, Oh, you can't get a one point two lens with the A mount because it's so small. Well, look at that. And somebody came out with that fifty millimeter one point two and gosh, that thing's a beauty. And let's just go into this since we're talk start talking about lenses. Um Tamron is is about to come out with this their first zoom that is an f2 or the first zoom that's the f2 and uh it's uh for the 35 to 150. now they're coming out with a version 2 of the 28 to 75 which i think is like slightly smaller but for the most part very 
identical. They just beefed up the body a little bit, and I'm, they put their new autofocus motors in there. So I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a, a tad bit faster autofocusing, even though the, the 28 to 75, I didn't notice. I don't, I don't really notice a big, you know, a short coming for that. But you got this, you got this, this beast of a, of a lens here. It's a little bit bigger. Here's another perspective. This is the on the left, the 28 to 75 G2. In the middle, obviously, is the 35 to 150, and the 70 to 180 2.8 uh, is right next to it, and it's not that much taller, so it's not that much bigger. Now it is an 82 millimeter filter thread, where the uh, the other one is a 67, so it's still gonna be a little bit, bit taller. But I mean, for size, it's not that much bigger, and you get image the the lens stabilization inside this one, uh, the 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 auto the auto autofocus on and off switch, and then you get there's two of those Sony custom buttons on this thing somewhere. I get, there's a Just picture Tamron, of one. Tamron calls those things uh, vibration control, right? Vibration control, yeah. yes. Yep, and then you got two those two buttons right there. I mean. This thing, I mean, this thing looks like a tank, though. In this, in this, when you see it in somebody's hand like this. Well, it, a person's tiny. I mean, that lens, that that bottom of the e-mount is bigger than that girl's right. wrist. <laughs> and two point, like f two at thirty five all the way to forty, two point two to forty to sixty, two point five to sixty to eighty, and then two point eight the rest. Of, that's that's amazing. Like that's, you know, and that's something you could zoom in on, and you're not really gonna lose brightness so i mean like it's gonna go up to you know it's going up a couple stops there but um i'm kind of thinking like i like i like zoom lenses that stay consistent through the zoom that they don't make many of them that way but um right going from two to 2.8 it's really not bad i mean also you could just start at 2.8 and zoom in right way and i i don't does it is it going to change i wonder if that lens is going to change if you start in two eight and go all the way out zoomed, I would guess it would stay at a two eight. No, it would stay. Yeah. It, it stays at its lowest. Yeah, it'll stay wherever the, the that uh, um, wherever you said it. Someone was asking about the, like astrophotography. I think eight oh eight state covered it, but uh, Nathan on the a seven three or a seven C that like twenty millimeter lens from Sony, the one point eight. This is kind of the one of the main lenses you'll see for uh, astro stuff. And this lens right here is a phenomenal astro lens, the uh, 24 1.4. I actually am using it right now on the stream, but holy cow, like well, that 1.4, and I just, I love the 24 millimeter focal length. The 20 but just yeah. gives you a more of a kind of domed look because it's a wider lens, but right. yeah, the 1.4 is going to be a little bit brighter. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think Jake Jake Sloan has taken some amazing astrophotography with that with this lens, mm -hmm. um, and it's you know, uh, it's a an expensive lens for a prime. It's fourteen hundred dollars, but if you have the EDU discount, uh, you can get it for twenty twelve fifty when it's not on sale. I got lucky and got this thing for like uh, what was it ten eighty ten eighty on sale. Mm -hmm. um, so I, well, mean, I did the same thing with the student discount. This thing. 600 I think bucks. I got, well, it was on $200 off sale. Right. And I got the 10% off. So I think I paid like six, 600 bucks. For it was 618 for that lens. Yeah, 618. Yep. I should have bought two. <laughs> but well, uh, I bought two of the 24s and mm -hmm. I, I thought I'd be able to at least make like 50 bucks to 100 bucks off yeah. it. Yeah. And, and I mean, and like, the cool time. thing with these lenses too, and the one that Paul has is you can put these on APS C lenses, uh, cameras. Obviously, it's going to change the, you know, the focal equivalent is going to be stronger, but. Like this is going to be a 35, I think, from 20. Yeah, so it'd be yeah. times 1.5. So, But if you're looking to get a sweet 35 millimeter lens for APS-C lens, my friend has this on his A6600, and that's that's his kind of go-to lens for shooting. So, Yeah, I mean, and you only have two lenses, right? So you have the 24 to 70 full, Sigma. Full frame, yeah. Full frame. Yeah. And then the, the that 20 millimeter lens. I think so. Hold on. I mean, are, do you feel yeah. like you're missing out on anything? Well, that's the thing. That's so. That's one drawback with the A7S three that you're not going to get with the A7 IV when that comes out. Is that the A7 IV is going to probably have super 35 mode? What that means is that you can put APS-C lenses on there, and it'll automatically crop to the correct size for that lens. Um, so if you put like a Sigma 16 on there, it's going to crop to 
like a 24 millimeter equivalent on the a7s3 it doesn't do that it does it in photo but it doesn't do it in video unless you're in 1080 right. because it can't crop it'll crop down to like a six megapixel and it's not right or eight megapixel and it's not going to show i did do a video on like how to kind of cheat that a little bit with using hector stabilization and punching in mm-hmm. and zoom and post but um th- that's one thing that i kind of didn't know when i bought this camera was that all my APS-C line lenses like kind of don't work on this, which is kind of a bummer. But if you're kind of buying full frame lenses to begin with, you can put those on APS-C lens cameras and be just fine. And you just have to find the right ones. So, yeah, I don't own any, I had APS-C cameras, but I never, I don't own any APS-C lenses. I just went ahead and bought full frame because I knew that I was going to be going yeah. that direction anyway. So, and you know, and that's the thing with the a7 III and the a7C is you can put, those lenses on those and it, it'll crop just fine and it'll be perfect. And, and it, they're cheap lenses. They're a lot cheaper than these other full, full frame lenses are like twice the price. If not yes. more. But so I like love, I also love is what? 360 bucks for that lens. <laughs> that's, that's, that that's lenses, the APS-C yeah. as that Sony 24 is for full frame cameras. Like, right. That's like the, you have to have that lens. <laughs> so I, I just wish I could have used that, made use of that on this camera better. Yeah, the the best thing about I, I do like that too is when when you're shooting uh, with the A seven C or the A seven three, you have the APS C crop mode. So even if you did have a full frame lens on, you can punch in on the lens and and turn like I could turn this twenty four millimeter into a thirty five millimeter. So it's almost like carrying two lenses in my you know with just one lens on the on the body. Yeah, when uh, you do the, the clear image, when you do the clear image zoom though, you are losing some megapixels, obviously. Um, so, uh, so not make, you, uh, not clear image zoom when you do the APS-C crop. You, yeah, you sorry, cut, that's you what I meant, yeah. The, yeah. Um, so, I mean, like, on this camera, when you put those lenses on here, it does crop down like a 6 megapixel or 7 megapixel. Right. So they're not I, – I did do some photography with the six, Sigma 16 and then zoomed in on it, and it wasn't great. Um, it looked great. Like, a lot of those photography on this camera is really nice looking until you start really punching in on it. Uh, so basically – Get your, get your, uh, what's the word I want to use? Uh, get your framing, what you want it to be. And that's how right. it's going to be. If you start, you know, on like these other cameras, you could zoom in 400% and it still looks great on like the a7R4. Oh, R4. Gosh. Yeah. And you can really Incredible. get what you want in the frame and it'll always look perfect. But this camera, it's like, you, you don't really want to crop in on it much or you're going to start seeing some of that kind of softness, softness in the detail and. Otherwise, if you're just using it for, obviously, everyone always says, if you're just using it for Instagram or whatever, uh, what people forget is that Instagram is like a two megapixel upload. So <laughs> everything looks good on Instagram. Everything looks, I mean, yeah, it doesn't matter. I shoot most of my photography on a cell phone for Instagram and it still looks good. It's, it's in your edits, but. Cell phones these days are getting crazy. But, but even if you're printing, like I have a bunch of prints that are, what, 16 by 20 and they look great off of this camera. So it's not. You know, people always think like photography sucks on the A7S3, and it really, if you're not printing a billboard, it's not going to be bad. So, right, I I I shoot a lot of photography on my A7S3, and yeah. nobody, I mean, nobody really. Knows. I think it looks great. It still looks better than my my A6400, even though the A6400 has more resolution. Although I did do shoot that one with that Sigma lens, and those do look good too. So, <laughs> um. What was I was going to say before. Yeah. And the other thing too, is that if you guys wait till the a seven S four, a seven, a seven four comes out, um, the a seven three is no doubt going to go on another sale. Oh yeah. Cause they're, they're going to, they're going to clear those out. It might not be as good as it will be like a month after it comes out, but I wouldn't doubt if you start seeing that camera, 14, $1,300, it's not going to go below the 6,600 probably for a couple of years, but that's still a really good camera. If you can find it that cheap, and then used market is going to be yeah. even cheaper because uh, I don't know. People yeah. tend to sell their stuff when they want to buy new stuff. Right. So you're going to see like an offload of cameras once that camera comes out. Even if people then, own two of these cameras, you're going to see them probably sell one of them and switch yep. to the a7 IV because a lot of these YouTubers and channels, whatever, they need to have the product so they can show it too. It's not just demo. So if it has 10 bit and it's a good B cam, they're going to sell their other one, you know, keep that thousand bucks that they paid more for, go for a cheaper camera and put that thousand bucks in a lens or something. So yep. uh, you will start seeing some off people off letting or often their a seven S threes and their a seven or 
A7R. I know there's too many names for these Sony cameras. I'm getting getting mixed up. The A7R4. You might start seeing people if they have multiple bodies or something, switching to the A7 IV. Everyone wants the new product. That's just how it is. So everybody, it, it's how it always is. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. We'll we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. Let's see if it's if it's another one, one of those A7 S3 moments where people are like, "It's coming out this month." Uh... I'm just waiting for that leak. Who's gonna be the Who's gonna be the leak? Oh. Man, I, I'm I'm I want to be on that leak like the ZVE. Gosh. Yeah, you you put out a yeah the ZVE10 leak. You know that you might have more like views on that views in like this that first week I got. <laughs> you might have more views on that leak video than the actual review videos from that camera. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> more people were concerned about what was gonna be than like actually what ended up being. So. Right. Yeah. That was, that was funny. That's kind of funny how that works too. I mean, obviously yours is kind of dead in the water probably at this point since it is out now, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a, like a, a hypothetical a video. Done. So now yeah. we know what it is. Has anybody got yeah. any other Sony questions too? Cause I could talk, me and Paul could talk for hours on Sony everything. So what's up media buck. Someone says the iPhone 13 puts out insane video modes. Look how big it is for the size. I don't know about you, but I've seen some of those videos, and I think that 13 cinematic mode looks disgusting. It just looks it's too so like it. It's it's like keeps the person like, and in the background, it's completely blurred out all mm -hmm. the time. There's like no variation between it, so it just looks. I don't know. It's almost like, you, and then and the, and if you look, I, if you look at the bouquet, like uh, who who did a video. Uh, Somebody did a video. Come, oh, uh, Terry, Terry, tight shirt, Terry. Yeah. Did a did a, the video like comparing all the different pictures of the thirteen to the his A seven three, and I could I pick every single one of them I guessed right because you can just look at the bouquet on the of the the fake bouquet and you can you can tell immediately uh, and and also the sh based on the sharpness of some like mm -hmm. and the details but like. Real, the bokeh is like really blurry and I don't know. It's pixelated. not even like bokeh. It's like it looks like it looks like it's stenciling the person and then just putting like a gloss and blur on yes. the background. Yes, so it's not the... really giving you bokeh, but then it's giving you this halo effect around you, especially if you have hair all over your place. It's gonna be weird. I like what they're doing with the idea. I think it's cool that you can do that. Um, like when that what was it the ten s first came out and it had the two cameras. Yeah, uh, it wasn't like a zoom or a regular. It was, it was how they did that depth of field for real. Like it, that camera did a real depth of field on portrait mode, which means it lo like it locked the setting and you took the photo. That's how it stayed in your phone. And then the 10R came out and it did the like fake one, like it is now the compu computational right. or whatever. But people like were really mad that you could adjust the blur that you put in there in post because it's all artificial. And I think if Sony would have put, or sorry, I think if iPhone would have put out that camera with like a dual camera system that actually did the real depth of field between one lens and the other, yeah, that would have been a, a cooler feature. Maybe that's something they'll do in the future. But um, 808 State asked if how to turn off the viewfinder because he, it, you know, you know when you put your eye up to the sensor, yep. it turns off the screen. He said, he, you know, if you put your finger over it or something. Which menu? I don't know. It's the it's the Sony A7 <laughs> three menu, so you uh, gotta so like it, dig it's through in and your, figure uh, out which menu it's in. Toolbox or briefcase? Everyone always says briefcase. I'm pretty sure. It's I want to say it's the briefcase or toolbox menu, definitely. Um, and then it, th there should be an option to just it's what what is it called? Don't, you it's you under, have the camera it's under you, Finder like, Monitor what? under your toolbox, and then there's one in there. Nope, sorry. They maybe changed it in the new one. Normally it's in the toolbox under finder monitor and you can go in there and there's this setting where you can set it to on always like on in the view in the touch screen off automatic when you lift it to the camera and then one that's just monitor. Um, I, I find that annoying too, where if you're on a gimbal sometimes and you're moving around, like you keep shutting off the screen because you're triggering that sensor. Um, honestly on the Sony menus, there's a thing on most of the new cameras called my menu. 
it's in the system. It's like a star. So what you do is you go into there and put add item. You go find set item like the view monitor or your film rates or whatever you want to put. That's your quick, like quick get to mode and save it there. And that yeah. way, when you bring up to your menu, like for instance, my menu here on this, let me get the focus to go. Come on, 6400, you can do it. So there like you in my menu, I have my file format, my movie settings, my S&Q settings, my marker displays, my picture profiles, format so you can format your SD card quickly, and then select finder monitor. Um, so that way I only, I put all the stuff that I actually use in the, my menu setting. So they don't have to like dig around through a huge menu system. Um, and most of these Sony cameras have that now, even like, yeah. even back four or five years, I think three, four years ago, they still have it. that. And it's um, something I never did on my other camera. I just always dug around and you're always like, crap, what's that thing called? And where do I find it? And eventually you learn it. But like, if you put it in your, my menu system, You'll have it in like two seconds. I got it in my my menu. I have it. I have everything in my function, function menu. Um, but yeah, I don't. I can't look it up anyway. Say because I just. It's just. I, I don't. I'm. I'm using the camera right now, but I. I think it's. It, it's definitely in the toolbox somewhere. It should be. Yeah. One of those. I wonder if I can find your thing. Is that gonna screw up if I turn this on? Oh no, it doesn't. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, so, am I still on screen here? You are, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, you can go into the... That's cool to know. You can go into your menu on <laughs> streaming. Uh, so it's yeah. under your toolbox, under... Let's see here. If you want to talk about something else, I'll quick find it. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much about... I mean, that's most of the rumors there for the a 7 IV. Uh, there's, the, there's new lenses coming out uh, from Tamron. They're supposed to be... Uh, also, I don't know if you guys noticed, there's... There's new CF Express card A's. Now, I, I don't have them, and I don't think Kyle has them either. We're just using V90 cards, and you're getting most of it stuff away. But I do like the fact that other companies are starting to come out with them. They're not cheap enough yet for me to jump onto that system. But I, I would like to, just so I could shoot in some of those high S and Q modes. Um, but for the most part, I don't really need I just use a V90 card. I use uh, Sony Tough cards. Just because I have the EDU discount and I use the M version of the tough card, so uh, it's the um, V60s, and um, you know if if I was buying cards, um, if I had an A7 C, I would just be using the SanDisk Extreme Pros because they're cheap, good, and they work really well on that camera. But when you're jumping to like the A7 S3, then you got to start getting those Sony tough cards, mm -hmm. at least a V60 or V90. All right, what do you got here? All right, um, so if you go, okay, that just looks like crap. If you go to, on the A6400, if you go to your number two camera on the menu, so the number one is all your camera settings, number two is your video settings. It's actually in that second category, the number two. Uh, mine's on page six of nine, so it's on page six. It's called Finder Monitor. Why would so they scroll not down to that? the settings menu? So those are, those are weird things you think they would be in the yeah, so settings that, menu. Let me see if I can get it one more time here to look focus it's the glare off the screen it's too bright yeah it's it's category number two page six called finder monitor and then you just set it to manual or off and i just set mine to manual that way you don't have to screw with it if especially if you don't ever use it just turn it off yeah and then put it in your function menu and put it or, in your, function or your my menu, menu. that way you can turn it on and off quickly if you need to that was fun. <laughs> so yeah, anybody? Uh, anybody got any other? Anybody got any questions on that ZVE10? Because I I just spent like better half of. Do you have anything with you can share with, with us from your future videos or anything like that? Uh, it's well, I'm hopefully if I get my thumbnail done tonight, I'm putting out like an accessories list video for that camera tomorrow. Um, there's some cool stuff that you could add to that camera for sure to make it better. Just it's it's very similar to an A6400 but it's not as controllable in manual settings. Uh, the the right. A6400 is just quicker buttons, um, dials and stuff. It, it's very similar image wise to that camera. The shutter roll is just as bad as the A6400. <laughs> uh, when you're in active stabilization mode and it's punched in 40%, it amplifies that a lot. So you get stable footage if you're walking, but it also gets 
this stuff a lot. So, yeah, I mean, that's where I'm like, uh, Jake Sloan said he's selling his uh, ZV1 now, and he's just going to end up keeping the ZVE10, which I guess he let, uses, likes to use a lot of lenses and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But I don't know. If it was me, I'd rather keep the ZV1 if I already had an inter- interchangeable lens camera, just because for what the, the portability for vlogging and th- there's no like jello with that one when you're moving around yeah, a lot the, and i feel like with the smaller cameras that's when you really want to be able to use you're, you're going to be moving around a lot you know with right. vlogging and stuff like that so i don't so know like vlogging wise i think like this and like the canon m50 are kind of kings for vlogging for low budget entry cameras um i think this camera has some of the settings that are better there's some better stuff on this camera that costs what 700 bucks there's some features on here that this 4,000 camera does not have. Right. That's just crazy. And like, there's no internal ND filter on the ZV-E10. There's like the active stabilization on here is better than on the A7S III. Jared's in, Jared's in the house now. What's up, Jared? He, he's making fun of us because he's he's a Mr. Black Magic, man. He's, Black he Magic. Got, he has no autofocus, but he's got a gorgeous looking No footage. autofocus and uh, weird looking yellows. <laughs> Hey, that camera's <laughs> awesome. If, if you're uh, if you know how to color correct and you're using DaVinci, that camera is gorgeous. It's yes, yes. Um, um, anyway, especially any of the Josh Yo. Did you ever see that Josh Yo one where he goes out in the middle of like a ghost town? No. He goes to like this ghost town in the middle of like L.A. or I mean not L.A. like a uh, Nevada or something, and he's showcasing that what that thing can do on a gimbal with like a two hundred dollar lens. He's using just a crappy Canon two hundred dollar lens. It looks like something that should be on like TV, like Netflix. I mean, it's wow better than. I mean, you got to learn yeah, how to I mean, color Dave grade. Dave Mays talks a lot about the Black Magic stuff. Dave Mays' dad shot a professional movie that was in the movie theaters with all Black Magic gear, uh, and, and it was you know Sony Sony picked it up and they they released it. Um, but yeah, it's they're good cameras for sure. So, so what Nathan asked again, is the A6400 getting an upgrade? Uh, yes, it was called A6600. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the, yeah, the A6000 series, uh, it's a little bit on question. I don't know what they're going to do with it. I, the 60, Everyone thought the ZV-E10 was going to be like, what do they call it, the 6700 or something like that? Right. Uh, and then kind of last minute, everyone found out it was a hybrid between the ZV-1 and the like APS-C line stuff. I mean, like pretty much a 6400 in a smaller body with dumbed down, like not as much custom but buttons yeah. and stuff like that. Um, and interchangeable lenses. But uh, the, I, I don't know. Uh, there was some patents on some APS-C stuff, and I don't know if we've seen them all yet. Sometimes it's hard to tell with patent numbers when they right. patent them in Japan. But I think... I don't know. Like, if I was Sony, I think I would stick to that whole ZV line being my new APS-C, and I would and go just, and just push full frame compact. Yeah, the rest. A7 compact would be my secondary. I think, uh, especially when there's not difference that much difference in price. But also, if you find an A6600 out there for cheap, like that's a great camera. Great camera. It still has shutter roll because that that 24 megapixel sensor is the same sensor they use in all those cameras. Um, I mean, this is the 6100 is actually really yeah. good too. It's just a, it's pretty much the same as that camera in a, in a cheaper body. If you're learning how to use your camera and you're not super confident with it yet, things like the ZV-E10 are awesome. They're super simple. You don't have to do much. The intelligent mode on that thing is awesome. Like I did a whole video in Mexico on the intelligent mode on this thing. It was a good video. And on this camera, it's a little weird because there's not that much dynamic range on this thing. So it would just blow out backgrounds, but it would always, it does some goofy things like, it constantly exposes to your face instead of the background. Um, by that meaning, normally when you have a bright background behind you, you're just going to silhouette and it'll like try to expose that. But if it gets the face like detection, it'll like expose your face and it'll just blow the background out. And that intelligent mode is really cool on this camera. And the ZV-E10, I was really impressed with the intelligent mode. Yeah. So if you're just like walking around, you don't know what you're doing with the camera pop that thing in intelligent mode and or like aperture priority or something like that and 
great camera. Yeah, um, 808 State asked an interesting question, and I, yeah. and I think I know the answer to this one for sure for you, but uh, do you guys recommend using hybrids or go straight for the FX6 if you really need to take if you if you really need to take pictures, I think, I think what he meant is, do we need, do we, do you need to use hybrids if, if you're not really taking pictures, um, or go, you know, should you, should, if you're not using f pictures, go, should you go straight to the FX6? And my thing is, it really depends on what you're shooting. Um, the FX6 and the ASO and S3 have very similar sensors, so you're just getting the bigger body with a lot more buttons and a lot more customization. To, and um, I think they have built-in NDs on that camera too. Built-in NDs yeah. as well. I know Potato Jet uses that camera. I think sometimes. I think he has the FS6, isn't that one yeah. of his camera? Yeah, it's one of, one of his Sony Venice cameras. or something like that. I don't. Yeah. I don't know which one they use, but uh, I mean the the FX3. From what I've caught, is everyone always a lot of the cinema guys always kind of crap on the FX3, saying it's not a cinema camera. Right. I, I, you know, and I don't think they meant it to be the FX6. I think that's a crash camera in the cinema world, just like right. the red uh, Komodo is. It's the smallest camera they can put on, like, roll cages and stunt cars and and still get by with it. I don't know what networks and what companies a lot have. I don't know what that camera falls in for, like, the ability to use for, like, Netflix and stuff like that. I don't think the A7S three or the FX3 is a qualified camera which is kind of why i think also a lot of people crap on it as a cinema camera i know the fx6 definitely is and like the uh, red cameras obviously are like netflix approved but um, yeah, I, I feel like those cameras are out of my league the ace one s3 is all i really need <laughs> if you're shooting yeah i mean like if you're shooting like professional <laughs> movies and tv shows a you're probably renting those cameras anyways you're not owning them uh, some companies will own their own set of cameras anyways, but right. it costs so much money to buy those cameras and then they're outdated in no time. So most production companies rent their cameras and they might own a couple. So it's, I don't know, the FX6, like I would, I would never pay for a cinema camera because I never have a use for something like that. But if you're shooting, like, if you're shooting a lot of music videos and stuff like that, I mean... You might. I would maybe even go red at that point, but I think uh, a lot of these other cameras are just as capable. So if you can get by using a A7S three or FX three, not spend twenty grand on a camera, that's that's pretty nice. So Brad wanted to know: Does the EV10 monitor blank out when when it's hooked to an external monitor? I don't know if I tested that. Hmm. That's a really good question. I should have tested that. I will be getting that camera back again shortly. Because I have to film another video with it, but uh, because I'm going to be doing a uh, comparison video between, I can, I can, I can tease this maybe. I'm doing a comparison video between the ZV1, the A6400, and the uh, ZV E10. His idea is so good. It's guy. going to be set up as a good and the bad and the ugly intro. So I'm going to shoot. I found this western town in Minnesota. It's like an 1800s western, and uh, we're going to shoot it as a good and the bad and the ugly shootout and then it's a shootout video between them but this is kind of my uh teaser frame from the the project so far oh, it's so good so, man i just have to get a few other buddies to help me with that one again and get the camera back so i can finish the video so um but yeah that was a good test i should check that out um there's always these tests that you should do when you test cameras and that's like sometimes you forget about those ones that's a very good question. I know the ZV, the ZV, the ZV one doesn't blank out, but I think you lose face tracking. And that's kind of the thing with most of these cameras. When you hook them up externally, you lose face tracking, except for the A7S three. You pay for that feature. Right. But um, yeah, the A7 three, if you plug in an external monitor, you lose all your face tracking. So if you're, um, a lot of times if you're using an external monitor, you're tied to a desk. So the focus system is going to work probably just as good anyways, unless you're doing a lot of weird stuff with your hands. Right. But I don't know. That's a good question. I should have done, I should have done my math, my homework on that one. Good question, Brad. Small rig has EV 10 accessories. Yes. Um, I've got some on the way, but now I don't have the camera in front of me. So small rig. That's did hilarious. Send me the two. 
Um, that's going to be part of my accessory video. They have a cool grip cage, which makes that grip uh, like usable. Um, the grip on the ZV E10 feels kind of like the A7C, but smaller. It's like an old 5100 body kind of. Right, and a, a, a small rig makes a really nice grip for the A7C too. That you got two options: either get a cage yep. that has a built-in grip into it, or, the base or you can just get the small L bracket, almost that goes on the bottom yeah. with like an, a, that extends the grip. Um, I haven't used them personally, but I've seen other people that have them, and it, it's it's really nice. But it does make your camera a hair bit bigger, just because it's well, adding extra good. stuff to it. I mean, the compact cameras you don't necessarily want. Like, I got that little base plate on the bottom of this thing, and it actually helps get more grip on the bottom. Right. And it also gives you, like, a whole bunch of mounting points. Because Sony did a dumb thing by putting... Where's my camera? Battery door. Putting that right there. So if you put it on a tripod, you can't open the damn battery door. Correct. So now I just put my tripod way over here, and you can open it all day long. And uh, I don't think that's a problem on the ZV-10, but it, it gives you more m mounting features. Plus, it gives you those, like, vertical mounting so for vertical video. Um, but the vertical the, video is all the hype right now. Yeah, the, the grip for small rig, the thing that's really cool about this, and I'm sure that's going to be the same for the A7C, is on the bottom of the rail, it's actually a Arca Swiss going the long way. So you can like just slide that in. You don't have to add extra brackets anymore. Oh, nice. So if you have like a Joby Gorilla Pod, you can just tie it down, clamp it down, you're good. And I, I kind of hope they may, I kind of want to just, like I have a cage for my uh, A7S III, but I, I kind of wish they did that. On my small rig cage, having that like built-in Arca Swiss plate is awesome. But yeah, they're they are. I think they're not on pre-order anymore. I think you can buy them now on Amazon. They were on pre-order for a couple of weeks, and now they're more expensive, not on pre-order. But uh, the ZV-E10 is a cool camera if you, especially if you're a beginner or if it's setting it on a tripod. It's going to be the same same image quality as what you're seeing now on these cameras, and it's right. the same sensor. You're getting an A6600 camera with more less controllable features for half the price. But it's got some trade-offs that I wish were better. <laughs> <laughs> wish they're a little better. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's interesting. It'll be interesting to see where Sony goes in the future here, but I I I think I agree with you. They're going to I think if it was me and I was Sony, I'd push the the, the EV line and then kind of move away from the APS-C high end. I don't. I don't get the high end people who are asking for a high end APS-C camera. Just get the A7C. Get the, you know, just. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think I that feel is like the high end APS-C is the, the A7C personally. Right. Because the crop body is a compact camera, and that's just a full frame version of it with a better everything. So. But I guess the the, the argument people are saying is that they want to be able to use the cheaper lenses from the APS-C and have high-end features. But I don't know. I feel like that's, that just defeats the purpose. I don't know. I mean, you could still use those crop lenses on, a, on A7C all day long. It's just, again, right. you're going to lose, yeah. You lose the full frame, but... 808 Sate, thanks for joining us, man. Have a good day at work. Aloha, is he from Hawaii? Sorry I missed so much. Wow, you're coming in at the last minute, bro, but better late than never. Can you can watch it, right? You're going to keep it on the channel? Yes, yeah, yeah. If you want to go back and see anything, uh, what we chatted about, you can go back and, and watch it. Once we once this stream ends, it'll just it'll live on my channel. Yeah, and if we can find a, possibly another day, you can free you up. Maybe we'll switch days on this and make it more regular. Yeah, you know... Um, well, uh, I'm tr we're, right now we're kind of experimenting with this stream and trying to figure out what works best. I don't know what time works best for most people. I think I kept it at 9 o'clock tonight just to test it out because that's what I always usually do a stream on with, with another channel. And um, But I don't, I'm not like married to 9 o'clock. I mean, and I'm not married necessarily to a Wednesday. Uh, I just want to make sure. I, I think the nice thing about later is that it gives the people over in like California and all them like a decent hour to, to get jump in on, where it's yeah. not super right when they get off work or, you know, it gives them a few time to get home. And... Yeah, what is there? Seven o'clock right now? Yeah, seven yeah. o'clock. Yeah, it's a, uh, it'd be a fun thing to continue. I think on, I think we need a button bar with a, uh, like a segment called That One Time at Camera Camp. Well, we definitely need we got, a, that we one time at Camera Camp. camp. And we can get some guests and, 
I I can get some guests that were that were at camera camp. Yep. I had there are some really nice big YouTubers that I know that have already mentioned to me that they would if I ever if I ever asked them they would do it for me. You know, well we had like 10 maybe 15 people max which tonight which I'm a small channel. I wasn't expecting a ton of people. I just wanted to hang out and talk cameras, but so I appreciate I mean, we'd be doing this anyways. By. We're just doing this now on camera. That's that's the difference. You guys are getting to experience what me and Paul just talk about on a regular day. Oh, yeah. Basis, so. This is like, hey, you want to get together and talk? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is. We, like we're going to do it anyway. We might as well do it live in front of everybody else, right? <laughs> Speaking of awesome guests, uh, Jared is in the in the, in the the group here. Uh, the Hive Podcast has got a pretty good guest coming up here. I mean, all of his guests are, I mean, crazy good anyways. But I know there's one that me and Paul follow quite closely. Uh, one that follows Paul closely uh, is coming out on his channel next week. Next week, I think, Jared, is that right? Jared, you're still there. I don't know. What? Who's the guest? I he's don't got, know. He's got Peter Lindgren coming on like next week. I think he said. Oh, he's got Peter second Lindgren? time. I think it's his first repeat guest now. So, me and Paul have been on Jared the Hive podcast as well. But he's got he gets some really, like he's gotten Sean from like Think Media and I mean like, yes. going through his podcast and his. And his YouTube podcast, I, I'm guessing, I don't know if he's recorded all of his videos, podcasts to videos, but he's got some just pretty ridiculous guests that come on in his show. Yeah, he has, I think he's been he's been doing um, the video format not nearly as long, but yeah, there's, and, and you know what, I was blessed to be able to go to, to, to camera camp and make some of these uh, relationships because it was funny when I went to camera camp, like people like, Sydney de Young's and his, the joke was like, "Oh, you're you know you're the guy that always tries to comment first on my videos. I finally get to meet you and sit down and you know now, you know, you when you build a relationship with some of those YouTubers, they're just like you and me. And and now I I kind of feel like they're kind of friends. You know, when I they'll always respond to my comments on their on their videos no matter what. You know, if I you know I wanted to ask them something, they would respond. Uh, a lot of them will answer my DMs on ins, on Instagram or Twitter." A lot of and, them will make uh, a yeah. congratulations video for you. <laughs> like like some nice guy that made a you know congratulations video for me. Yeah. That was that was sweet. That was sweet. Yeah, the, a lot of the response from those people too were just like, Oh yeah, for sure, I'll get you it right away. I think Donna sent me <laughs> one in like six minutes. When he, when he asked me too, he's like, vertical or horizontal? I was like, oh vertical. And then like five <laughs> minutes later, I was like, Oh crap, no, horizontal. And as a right horizontal, he's already sending me the file. <laughs> That's hilarious. And I was like, "Oh crap!" Well, whatever. It's it's done. I don't want to ask him to do it again. So, what do you guys uh, think? So, Gabe came in late. Uh, a R five versus A seven four. I mean, that's. It, it, I don't think early, it's, it's too early to compare league. that. Yeah. Well, I guess you know what? <clears throat> maybe maybe they are. Maybe I mean maybe they are going to be trying to compete with the R five. I think it's going to be somewhere in the middle I between gonna... the R six and the R five. Yeah. I think the R the R five is not gonna the R five is comparable to like that's that's the thing with the R five is it it's it, it's comparable to A seven S three but it's also comparable to the A seven R four that camera minus its overheating issues is good at really good at photo and really good at video but they've gotten a lot better with the overheating issues I've heard but the biggest well, complaint kits, that I hear about Canon foot uh, Canon is their footage like just trying to find a computer that will work with the footage. And I mean, Sony people who switch from Canon to Sony say, yeah, the Sony footage is not, it's not like it's like cakewalk for most computers, but if you have a decent computer, you can edit the 10 bit right. footage with little drops, well, regular 10, but for uh, regular, regular 10 bit four, two, two in 4k, like 24 people have problems on the Canon. Um, I get that same problem in like 120 <laughs> frame right. for, for FPS in four, you know, 4K 10, uh, 422. Uh, so it's comparable to that, and you do have to. I just proxy everything, anyways, at this point. Uh, and um, like, also, if you uh, you since you were jumping in late, you should check out the basic filmmaker. He did a video where like a lot of big YouTubers like Peter McKinnon and Matty Hippoy and all those guys uh, were like trying to cite and and. Frono's photo uh, was trying to cipher which f footage was Sony and which one was Canon after it was color graded, mm -hmm. and they shot very similar framing and tried to pretty much get the footage to look identical. 
Yeah, and they color graded, they color corrected them for sure, so they're not as obvious. Right, but most people couldn't couldn't tell the difference between that the two. video is funny too because like McKinnon only shoots cannon, so you feel like he should have a harder time judging right. the two. Maybe Apoya has done both, so you think he would be the best at it because he's probably got a good eye for both of those cameras. Daniel Schiffer is a like a Sony, Sony. only. He's right. fanboy. Like you, if anyone's gonna notice the like 120 bit like frames per second shots, he should have been the one. <laughs> and I think he he got last. <laughs> so it's that's it just shows you if you use the tool correctly and color grade them and stuff, it's it's gonna be hard to tell. Who, who won that one? Uh, I don't want to say. We should let these people watch it first. Okay, yeah, it's a watch fun video, the video to watch. I'm like what ten thousand dollars or something. Yeah, let's just say it this way: any one of those people who won didn't need it. <laughs> so didn't need the ten thousand. I hope they charitied it, but um, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure if I was in that spot, I'd take it though. Uh, I don't know. It's it's that the comparison so far with the R5 to the. R, I mean, I'm going to compare the R5 to the R4 because that's the comparable, or the A1 for that matter, because the R5 is a very good photo camera. The A7 IV is going to be a hybrid photo video that will not be better than their counterparts in the R or the S line. So, but Parker Wilbeck, yep. yep. Now the R6 versus the A7 IV, that's going to be a good video to see once it comes out. Way too early to tell at this point. I, I think they're going to be probably pretty similar. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, so it's Parker this, Wahlbeck this... is the guy who runs it. I, I, that's his, I don't know if it that's the name of that channel or if it's full-time filmmaker or something like that or basic filmmaker. Oh, it is. You know what? Not the basic filmmaker, the full-time filmmaker. Yeah. Yes. But it's, it's with Parker but, Wahlbeck. Par, He's Parker the, Wahlbeck. Yes. Yeah, so that's the, that's his channel. Whatever the name of his channel is. I just see it all the time and watch and it. And all also. The, you see even the YouTube ads too. It's hilarious. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's, I don't know that I, I, I like this. I like just chatting with you. That's what kind of see. That's, that's exactly how I see this stream. You know, we just, talk geek out ca about cameras what we would talk about for like an hour on the phone anyway like i think we did this i think we did the same thing the other night when i was driving <laughs> to get my family ice cream <laughs> mm -hmm. um and uh but the cool thing about this too would be to uh, i'd like to also share photos on here um mm -hmm. and and just a little bit a uh, little bit more uh just sony sony gear nerd reviewies whatever i don't know Anything that anything we're like testing, um, and 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 like we did tonight, answer a lot of questions. So it's um, not always about Sony's too. Like if we get other stuff in here, we we'll talk about whatever too. Um, oh yeah, I'm not limited to myself. Just I shoot Sony, so that's what I'm going to talk about. But there's, I mean, like just like all of our channels, we review. I mean, Paul Paul's got more RGB light videos than I can imagine. Um, you got Paul. You got me doing this stuff now with this like create like crazy color backgrounds and this light is so cool man i love this little dang stick light from we light gosh we light makes some i just did a video on this thing too i got this is i got a second one um but man this thing is so cool it's like in a tiny little box i can't i want them to make like a big four foot one mm -hmm. Cause yeah, that uh, is Gabe, if you nine bucks for that little small one. Sorry, just answer uh, your question. Uh, Gabe, Gabe wrote, he just checked out the a seven three at Best Buy and uh, he said it felt really good in the hand. A seven three is like one of them. I think that's one of the more comfortable Sony grips so far. A lot of people like the a seven S three. I, I, there's something goofy with my, how my thumb sits and my, this part, I wish I, it was up a little higher. I think if you have big hands or if you have big hands, the a seven S three feels great. Yeah. But for me, like I had no problems with the A7 III. Like that's a great. I mean, grip. I thought it was a pretty darn good grip. Um, if it was a a hair, I'm talking like somewhere between the A7 III and the A7S III. I think that would be like the for me like the perfect grip if you were like nitpicking. But I love the way the the yeah. A7 III felt in my hand. The only time I really notice it the most is when I'm running that Sigma lens, the Sigma tank. You know the twenty four seventy. Oh yeah, because then all of a sudden you're just like, <laughs> you feel like you're and, holding on. To... You know, I guess that's you know something that the, if you're shooting with the Ace One S three, a lot of your lenses are probably going to be tanks because you're there. All the, all those G Masters that are really big, um, but I don't know. So Sony's been putting out a lot of light lenses, mm -hmm. 
Tamron that are too. low. Like this 24 millimeter. Gosh, I love this lens. I want. I want to keep it. Can I keep it? Can I keep it? Uh, is, she, <laughs> is she watching right now? I don't know. You got. You, st um, you still got two of them? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna definitely get, end up having to ship one back, unless somebody on here is in the market for a really good deal on a 24 millimeter lens. I, I, I will. I will literally sell it to you what I paid for it, as long as you take care of shipping and fees and everything. As long as I walk away with 1080 in my pocket, I don't care. So if anybody's looking for a 24 it's millimeter, it's cheaper than yeah. used price, which is kind of crazy, and that's brand new. Uh, that's and that's what I bought two of them. I'm like, well, I'm definitely going to be able to sell one of them, no problem, for eleven hundred dollars at the lowest. But I thought I, I thought I was going to get like eleven fifty for it on Facebook Marketplace, and I haven't. I lowered it down to eleven hundred dollars on Facebook Marketplace, and I haven't even got one hit on it. I mean, I got a lot of people looking at it, but and there was other ones on there that were like used they were asking like twelve hundred dollars and i go throw it up on there for like eleven hundred and somehow the you the, the used one for twelve hundred is gone i yeah. don't know if they sold it or if they just took it down i don't know it's weird maybe maybe people think yours is too good to be true or something yeah we got a lot of drone we got a lot of drone brews people coming in the stream here yeah man a lot of homies fly zone drones what's yeah. up bro so like paul on, on this channel you're not producer paul i mean I, I i i'm producer paul but i i don't know you're producer paul on uh I think on on uh, drone brews. I think I think you're host Paul on this one. Host if Paul. Anything, I'm yeah, producer I don't Kyle. know. I don't know the host Kyle. Uh, producer yeah. Kyle. What? That just doesn't sound right. I'll just stick with no. once. I mean, the name has stuck with me. Uh, so I mean, I guess, but I guess I'm not really producer Paul on this. But well, everyone knows I, how to say that. Like some people might look at your last name and say, "Is it Feenberg? Fein Feinberg? Feenberg? Fein? Like?" So funny story. Um, this is totally not. This is getting off camera topic, but whatever. We watched this movie on uh, Netflix. It's called uh, Worth, and the guy in the main character in the movie, played by Michael Keaton, is Kenneth Feinberg. I've never heard my last name in like a movie much less i've rarely ever have seen it out in in the, in the real world but anyway yeah the, last well, name, uh 808 say how to go back to work so i don't think he's here anymore my, my my real last name is walton my nickname is watts so the only two things i've ever had my last name show up in is the waltons uh so <laughs> back in the day i used to get a lot of prank phone calls to the house looking for john boy and then uh which is going to be probably ahead of most people's time here and then I get like there's a, a like a movie about an alien abduction from this guy named Travis Walton. That's the only time I've ever really heard Walton ever used. So kind of yep. kind of funny. Yep. So Sup, anybody else guys, we've been going on for an hour and a half today. An hour and a half. We could we could talk cameras all night long if you really. I still got to do a thumbnail tonight and put together a bunch of links oh, for thumbnails products. Thumbnails are but... the worst. Oh gosh. I can't. I hate doing thumbnails. I just, I don't know. You guys, uh, anybody seen? Uh, off, way off topic. Since we're going to end this probably quickly here. Anybody been watching Squid Game? It's on Netflix. I have not. I've saw it. It's like one, like pretty high up there on the watch list. But I... yeah, well, it it's this Korean show that just came out of nowhere, and it's people in America are like, oh, it's like the Korean uh, 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 Hunger Games. <laughs> and I'm just kind of like, oh, Hunger Games is a rip off of the Japanese show called, or movie called uh, Battle Royale. So I'm like, if anything, it's like a Korean Battle Royale, but it's it's very weird and different and like super violent. But I mean, it's if you haven't checked it out yet, that's a it's a fun show, and I think that one's a show shot on red. Bring that All back right, to so camera. <laughs> before we end this, mm -hmm. should you wait for the A7 IV? supposedly it's supposed to come out in the next between end of September and October at this point. Yes. I think you should probably just wait. It's got to come out soon, but I, if you got if you, if you're waiting, if you're waiting to start like a YouTube channel till you get that camera, just buy something else and just get started. Cause that's dumb. Like if you keep, if you've been waiting forever for this thing at this point, maybe just keep waiting, but I don't know. It's, the a and c can do everything that a YouTuber needs and more, probably. Uh, so if it was me and I was needing a camera to start a YouTube channel, I would either go, if you're a brand new newbie, ZV-1 or a and c um, because those, like, you know, 
you can at least get your fingers dirty with the right. ZV1, and it looks great under great lighting. So, if you and, and, and it's a perfect vlogging camera. If you're vlogging, hands down ZV1. But the A7C is just an alt like you. You can grow enough room to grow into that camera. You got affordable lenses like the Tamron 17 to 28, um, and the 28 to 75, or the Sigma 24 to 70, and done. Like you get the Sigma 24 to 70, which is a pretty heavy lens, or the Tamron 28 to 75. I'd wait till the two Mark II comes out because like it's supposed to be like announced like in the next few days or something like that, or next week or something like that. Mm -hmm. But um, get that and then just you're you're good for a while you know like right. just figure out what focal lengths you like and then as you progress as a filmmaker then start buying those primes but the the, the a7c is going to do everything you need it has great colors flip out screen amazing autofocus the tracking the eye autofocus and video and has all the uh color three different video modes you can save in on the on the camera has the snq mode um it's perfect for like you know taking time lapses and all the stuff. Great for photography, so you can shoot your thumbnails with it, no problems. And I mean, I love shooting photography with this camera. So I don't know. Just don't I, buy I'm the in, kit lens. Just, any the, just don't buy the well, kit lens ever with Sony. That's that's just well. The, the, I've, heard too that the, I've heard of the twenty-eight to sixty lens. That little pancake lens is actually a very decent lens. But if it was me personally, I you, would. You'll buy it you'll buy something else and it'll immediately get put on your shelf and you'll never use it again until you do a video on if the kit lens is worth it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I mean like I agree a hundred percent with that. And that, to add on to what Paul said, um, if you buy that camera and then the a seven four finally comes out and you're like, Ooh, now I want that. You're going to be able to sell whatever you bought for probably almost what you paid for it. Unless it's been like five more years from now and that still hasn't came out. <laughs> uh, but the other thing that I will say about being on YouTube is there's this weird thing that happens where you get Can your you know setup and then you find out, shit, I need, I need a second camera. Cause I need, if, if I'm talking about this camera showing this lens, I need to film myself with another camera. And that's kind of another problem where you're like, or I want an overhead shot. So if you, you know, if you get like an a seven C and then maybe it works for you for a year and you want to upgrade, and you can afford a second camera, keep that one as your, your B cam. And you'll find out how, I mean, like I use two cameras all the time or even sometimes oh, yeah. three cameras all the time. Biker, like, uh, you, you should, uh, yes. The thing, if it would be hard for me to go back, if I had to go back and start from scratch and decide what lens to get, I'm a Tamron fanboy. The Sigma looks, uh, hair a bit better to my eye and the bouquet looks a little bit more nice they're similar but i really really do like the lightness of the tamron lens and i it fit it feels a lot better on the ASO and c than the than that sigma 2470 but at the same time if, if you want the best quality Im like image out of your camera then yes go for the 2470 and if you got the 2470 and the ASO and c you're done for a while until you well, figure out exactly what it is. And yes, all, that, that I would 24 to 70, always... <laughs> that 24 to 70 on the a seven C I maybe wouldn't recommend unless you bought the grip extension. Cause this is like a, a really weird unbalanced lens on a smaller camera. It, it feels heavy on the, in the a seven S three on the a seven C it would be like, <laughs> yeah, so, I, I did I mean, a photo shoot on the a 6,400 with this lens. And that I was just like, Ugh, this all day, but Biker, if you really want to know the comparison between those two lenses, uh, Kyle and I did a video. It's on my channel. I think it's not my last video, but the, the video before that. I We were at Disney Springs, and we just were shooting the same body, uh, both A7S threes with the uh, Sigma and one with the Tamron. And we just, I did, we just did a ton of different shots, pictures, and video footage of those cameras side by side. And we both kind of, you know, the only thing thoughts. I really took from that that looked different is uh, like the white, like at its widest, this is a 24 and that's a 28 that you're talking about. Uh, in video, it it kind of looked the same. There's not much difference, but in photo, for sure, that 24 was a little bit wider. Yep. But that was really it. And that, what's that, 250 bucks cheaper for that lens? 250 bucks cheaper and a heck of a lot lighter. Half the so weight. Way so better on the ASIN. What I was going to joke about is, 
This is the Sony a7S III with a 20 millimeter lens. It's not a heavy, super heavy lens. This is like 900 grams. This is 1200 grams. This lens weighs more than this whole camera setup. <laughs> so it's a really nice lens. And a lot of YouTubers buy this because ultimately what they wanted was the G master Sony lens, but this is like a thousand or like $1,100 and the G masters, what? 2200, $2,300. And this is not much. This is as good of a lens as the Sony G master. It's just, it weighs a little bit more. And uh, the Tamrons are really nice because they are like half the weight. They're super light. And they're Tamron 2875. The thing is like super light. This is also another great lens if you need versatility. This is the literally the same exact size. They're pretty much the same body, but the in different internals, obviously. This is the, the 28 to 200. So it's, you know, it's got a little bit more reach um if this lens was out when i first started i might have actually started with this one too just because it you get that full range to figure out what works and then this one's only 650 bucks i think mm -hmm. uh and it, it looks like quality wise as good as this it starts at 2.8 but once you start going past 28 it immediately goes up uh to what is it 5.6 5.6 but i mean if for photos for sure that uh, that doesn't bother me when when i'm zooming in and out for video it is a little bit annoying you rather i'd rather have an, a steady aperture but i don't know if this was like if i i could see myself starting with this lens for 650 dollars and then maybe getting like the 17 and 28 and both the 17 and 28 and this lens could do like everything you need mm -hmm. um I don't know. The one thing I, I always mean, felt kind of down on the 70 is that the 2470, you zoom in on this and you get a, I mean, like the bokeh on this thing is awesome when it's zoomed in. But so like I kept finding myself, like I my I went from the, my other zoom I have is a 20, uh, 18 to 105 on the crop sensor. And that thing is the equivalent of like a 140 or something like that, 135. And like only getting 70 on this is just kind of like, ugh, I wish this went further. So like having the ability, if, if they made a 24 to like 200, that would be awesome. Cause that, that would be a perfect length to get you literally anything. You I could only imagine how heavy that lens would be. <laughs> it, it, that's why you'd have to buy Tamron. <laughs> um, that would be like an awesome thing to have. I think what I would say, why I would say not to buy the kit lens is not that they're any, not great. It's just that you will buy the camera. You will eventually buy a new lens and then you will never touch that kit lens again. So you're wasting 150 to three, four hundred dollars on those kit lenses, right? If you never use them, which can be, I mean, I think the little pancake lens that came with my A6400 was like 200 bucks. That's 200 bucks I could have spent on the 16 Sigma 16. And the use value right on those things are just garbage because yeah. nobody's buying them. No you one know? wants them, so it just you won't sell them. And the only per, the only kit lens I've ever really seen sold is the 28 to 70 full frame lens. Some of the crop body people buy that lens. Cause it's more substantial and it's a nicer lens than the kit lens, but like the stock pancake one, but right. I just, I would never recommend buying the kit lens with the camera because there's always, you're always going to replace it and you're never going to look back at it. So not that they're not capable. It's just, and I mean, with like we said with Sony earlier, man, there's just so many lens options out there. And, and it's addicting. It really is. I mean, I think you're you're at your second lens, full frame lens. Uh, what 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 is your? If you had to purchase another full frame lens, like right today, well, which one would which one would you end up purchasing? Do you think? Um, that's weird for me. It's always like what you need as your in your kit. Um, I, I mean, I have the mid range zoom, the twenty four to seventy, so nothing in that range, and I have the twenty millimeter. So for me right now, I would want to go seventy on up. So probably like the 70 to 300 or 200, wherever that, I yep. love that Sony one, but that thing's too grand. So I don't really want to spend money on that. Cause you always want to be in mind on like what you're going to use it for and how much you want to actually spend on that. Like I would probably not use a crazy zoom lens, so I'm not going to spend three grand on a zoom lens, but the Tamron that you're about to show, that's a, that's a great option. That's the 300. Because I yeah I don't so re the reason why I bought this lens is because my wife likes doesn't like changing lenses 
and she likes to zoom a lot, but she also needs to be it to be a little bit wide because when we're going out shooting photography. So this is like the perfect lens for her because it gives her a nice large range and she never ever has to change the lens. That's the main reason why I bought this lens. The other reason we bought this lens is just so I can have that ability to shoot the the super zoom at like, you know, mm-hmm. between 100 and 200. And this is super nice for when I'm wanting to take like shots of my son like we had him shoot on a water slide the other day, uh, going down a water slide, and I was, you know, just zooming it in 200, not getting super close to the in the splash zone of the water slide, but I'm still getting the shots of of them down the water slide. So these definitely have a purpose, and I love taking it with me to Disney when my son is out playing on the splash pad or whatever, and I I can I can crank it in and get those 200 shots, and I can quickly zoom out and get those wider shots of him playing, mm-hmm. you know, playing on the splash pad. So this has a place but like you said i don't i don't want to spend like you know two grand or three grand for a 70 to 200 i'm not going to use anything that's up that range a lot so exactly i don't don't use it that often but and you know and the high aperture thing doesn't really bother me everyone's like well you you know i wish it was a 2.8 all the way through uh when you're zoomed way in on something that's close like in a foreground and there's still depth behind them you're going to get bokeh no matter what blown out and yeah. sometimes those like 1.2 and 2.8 lenses that are crazy zoom lenses they they will completely cut you out of the background almost and then blur everything is just unrecognizable <laughs> and like you'll see some of those sports photos where it's like there's a place for that where it's you see the the action and then everything else is just like who cares about the background and that's what those low aperture zoom lenses do is they just put so much blur in the background that it's almost like you don't even know what's behind you, but sometimes that's the point. You you want to separate it that much, but sometimes like f four and f five look awesome when zoomed way in. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Just get the tools you need for the project need and the, and the expense that you want to spend. So I would say most importantly, get spend your money on the body and at least one good lens. Get one good lens. Like you know, a good twenty four Sony just starts you out of some manufacturer and you're pretty much set or something yeah i i have so i have the tamron 28 to 75 the tamron 17 to 28 which covers me for that wide end and then uh the 28 to 200 so i pretty much have like all my all my zooms at this point for me i'm not buying any more zooms and then i got this 25 should have it soon i mean uh, I, hopefully i'll be able to keep it the 24 millimeter 1.4 like my dream like wide prime for G-Master. like not too wide but that that perfect length for b-roll and, and and nice landscapes and then i think the only other lens i really would want is the uh like a, a good 80 either either the 51.2 or the 85 or an 85 1.4 and i think i would be pretty much done with my kit the only the only other lens i would possibly buy is that if i shot a lot of real estate is the fort that 14 millimeter prime but so, just because it's I'm, you know for real estate, it's kind of nice for smaller rooms. But the seventeen to twenty eight takes care of most of that sure. for me right now. I I did a, a fun thing. So like when I got that ZVE ten, I also rented the uh, ten to eighteen yeah. f four lens. Um, on that camera, it's you almost need that camera if you're especially if you put an active stabilization. Having that ten makes it look like a sixteen again, which is like <laughs> a twenty four millimeter right. equivalent. So. Uh, I was just joking around and I put that lens on the A7S3 to see what it could do. At 10, it was just cropped like crazy. Like you could see the vignette and the whatever. Right. But if you zoomed that to like 11 or 12, it was perfect. And you literally got a 12 millimeter F4 lens. And it was very weird. Like it, like you could hold the camera like this. But you'd start oh, man. holding it like way out here. I, I wish I had footage on my on my, my on on my computer right now. But the first the, well, the first time I ever shot with a Sony camera was at a B Alpha event that was in Orlando, mm-hmm. and I and I checked out the twelve to twenty four f four lens with the A seven three, and I was just like holding the A seven three like vlogging like holding it just like right in front of my face, and you could just see like everything with the f twelve. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, the uh, the that. Like, because if you put that 10 to 18 on the full frame, it, it's full frame. So it's I was getting like 11 mils, 11, 12, 
it, 11 works fine if it's on a tripod, but if you're moving around, you'll get some of that like vignette creeping in. Yeah. But when I went to 12, it was so freaking wide. And then if you zoomed it all the way to 18, it just, it looks still wider than my 20. Uh, I kind of liked that lens. And if it, if it, if, if I found another good one price wise, I think I might buy that one because it was a very interesting lens and you would huh. never need anything ever wider than that ever on this camera, I think anymore. And it's like, it also distorts a little bit, which is kind of funny. Um, that, that was the, imp- that's the impressive this is thing the distortion, that I've seen with the 14 millimeter. If you millimeter. try to make the distortion with a 10 millimeter, let me see if I can. Okay. So you can see yeah, like, your, my arms, your just arms are really long. distorted. Yeah. But, uh, it, you get some just weird shots with that 10 millimeter. It was, it was interesting. That would be a, a lens that I would maybe recommend for APS-C lines. I think Tamron made a new one. For the APS-C, to, it's 11 yeah. to 18, maybe. It's like 11 to 18. It's going to be the similar one, but if you have an APS-C line camera, those uh, those super wides are kind of fun. Very fun. They're not going to blur the background much, but... I think we got to call it a night tonight. We've yeah. been up for a long time talking, yeah, and I got up. I'm going on a trip tomorrow. I got to pack. I got to pack my bags. I'm going to the beach this weekend, so I got. I got a few. I'm, I'm using for some, some vacation days this weekend, and but then I'm working all next week, and then we're going on a vacation again the following week, and we're just we're just doing a bunch of stuff, man. Nice. So, so hopefully, 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 you're, hopefully, yeah, hopefully you get, you get vacation time. Yeah, hopefully we can do this again soon, and. Uh... Maybe make it a normal thing at some point and get some guests would be kind of fun. Yeah. So share some love. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought about the whole show. Uh, I'd love to... Hit that uh, like button too because that, that helps promote these... Uh, yeah. The algorithm. Hit that like things. button. Um, and what's what was really nice is I, I need freaking watch time right now. <laughs> 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 and helps. we've had... You know, we've had... We have had like... 10 people for most of the show at you know at at any given point so um that's definitely going to help my watch time because the the i got a lot of watch time from those uh that zve 10 video but but yeah the when you live stream it definitely helps but that's not the intent yeah this is it's not really gonna do much for this channel but we just like to hang out and geek out and talk cameras but if you want if you uh, have any opinions or thoughts what you think would be better or if you what you liked we'd love to hear what you had what you had to say about the show uh go check out kyle's channel just throw his i'm going to show throw a link to his channel here in the chat because uh yeah he's he's an awesome dude and uh, and i will put the link in the description as well once this is all posted up i think uh next time much... too one topic we could you know talk about too is that we could see if uh i know there's a lot of people who follow videos like this that are starting channels on youtube Oh yeah, or or beginning or have started one and maybe you're kind of just roughing it through. Um, not that I mean I've been on YouTube for a couple of years now, but it's it's a it's a grind and there's a lot of cool tricks to learn and tips that you can me and Paul can both share easily. It's always a, it's out you're always growing so like, not that I know everything and or anything at all for that matter, but uh, it's nice to hear from other people. Especially I like hearing from people who are starting, who are like have started a channel recently and are doing well that kind of give tips along the way. Cause sometimes those big channels, their tips are maybe unrelatable being, they have to do totally different things with the algorithm working for them. So, right. But uh, yeah, we could maybe talk about like starting channels and like kind of basic gear and. Absolutely. Not, and we could give us a, show examples and stuff like that too. Cause, uh, I mean, you don't really need you don't need much to start a channel, um, and it, and as you grow into your channel, you can you just keep geeking out, and especially, I mean, it depends on what kind of niche you you are in too yeah, on your channel sure. and what you need. If you're if you're not in a film, I feel like when you're in a filmmaking niche, people are a little bit more picky in what they're watching and what they want, what they expect, I guess. Mm-hmm. But if you're in like a you know a different niche where that's not as big of a concern, you you might get the same filmmaking gear and be able to use that for a really really long time because i mean everything is good these days so yep so yeah we could do that next time or something and some and cameras maybe maybe road will sponsor one of these for us or something yeah i mean they've yeah, already road, they, you guys if you haven't you, checked you already out road, the 
<laughs> well, if we do a gear uh, gear list for a starting YouTube channel, yeah, we'll have to see if Road will reach out for that. I mean, they 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 already sent you some nice wireless microphones. So there's such a cut. I love Rode. The comp the comp. I've grown to really love Rode lately. I mean, I've always loved their quality, but like, I didn't realize how supportive they really are of the creative community, and um, and so I've just been really falling in love with that company. So. Yeah, I think they sent. I've seen them send gifts to people's like newborn kids and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. And oh yeah. With uh. Yeah. Sending them like road like onesies and like that, yeah. and a, a road care pack for new babies. Yeah. It's hilarious. So, but, when's your next video coming up, Paul? That's a very good question. I have so many ideas, and I haven't yet sat down and filmed it. So this is my next video that's coming up. Uh, it'll be posted <laughs> after this is over. But um, I. Uh, want to shoot an accessories video for the A7C um, this coming week. And um, I really want to do a video also comparing the A7C to the uh, A7S3. Just just image for, you know, qu like image quality, the basic, if you were just shooting straight out of the camera, uh, mm -hmm. just because I want to, uh, it, some people are wanting like this, oh man, everybody's telling me I got to get the A7S3, but sometimes the 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 better camera is not necessarily yeah. the i think you got to do that both out of the camera and then also like do the best you can out of both the cameras just to kind of show the difference on that as well but that'll be an interesting video as well um yeah hopefully we see that uh, accessory video coming up soon you got you might have to pick up a couple more things for that thing i got a video hopefully if i get my thumbnail tonight i'll have that out tomorrow as well so so if you guys are any, even you guys are looking at the Z, ZVE10, I got some cool videos coming up on that as well. So absolutely, absolutely, um, yeah. So we 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 could do that. Definitely do a lot of, of of beginner kits, and there's gonna be a lot of you have a lot of good videos coming up. Um, and I just I like I like Kyle's take on a lot of these things. Um, as well, you know, we both have charging walls, and that's actually how I found Kyle originally. He has a really cool video on a charging wall so you don't realize how much a charging wall just like saves you until you make one i mean i love being able to just tell my smart assistant to turn on my charging wall and just like throw all my batteries for all my filmmaking kit on it and just know that when i wake up in the morning everything is already good to go so it's just I, I added all those new road wireless to goes to my charging wall and i have to get like four more cables because there's th like three well, there's three it more looks, cables. It looks so uh, nice back there. Yeah. I know. Oh, the funny thing is those blinking lights right there that are charging. Those are supposed to be uh, back there. I forgot about them. I was charging them before this started, and then uh, <laughs> I, I never put them back there. I normally keep purple and orange lights back behind that wall. That's hilarious. Is what it is. But anyway, so, if you guys made it this far, thank you guys so much for tuning around. We've almost gone on for two hours, and I still have to pack and leave early in the morning tomorrow. So I'm going to have to call this one night. Thanks so much for hanging out with me, Kyle. Thanks to everybody else for uh, hanging out. And um, do check out Kyle's channel because he's got some, like I said, amazing content on there. And I will try to be getting back into the game. And I want to catch up to Kyle because he, he surpassed me and I'm I'm trying to catch back up to him. But anyway, thanks, man. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks yeah. for hanging out tonight. I'm sure we'll be chatting throughout the week. And uh, everybody have a great night. And we'll end. You guys know, I will see you in the future. Ooh.